One of the tiniest and cutest birds of North America, the ruby crown kinglet is an extremely energetic songbird. Frantically going about while making twitchy motions as it moves through branches and shrubs of trees in search of insects. Seriously though, they have this adorable, nervous-like energy, as if they've had too much caffeine. In fact, I think they are best compared with an extra small triple-triple coffee. They also seem to have a curious nature and often will pop out to investigate people or other birds and animals. Even the rare moment when they aren't moving about and are actually perched in one spot for a few seconds, they almost always are flicking their wings. A habit of theirs that is a good key identification clue. A common characteristic that adds to their sweetness is hovering kind of like a hummingbird to take insects from the surface of leaves. Sometimes they will fly out to catch bugs mid-air, too, like flycatchers. Due to how they dart in and out of view and moving continuously, it can be pretty challenging trying to keep up with them. It just seems that these hyperactive birds are too busy to stop. Hard to imagine them sleeping at night. Metabolic studies on ruby crown kinglets suggests that these tiny birds use only 10 calories, technically kilocalories per day. They are smaller than a warbler or chickadee, with a pretty olive green color and a broken white eye ring, with the sweetest most darling little deep dark eyes that seem to have a relative big look to them. Maybe it's the eye ring that makes it appear that way to me. As with chickadees, these guys have a comparatively large head, but have almost no neck. A lot about this bird is tiny, their size overall, which is around 3.5 to 4.5 inches in length, with an adorable wingspan of just 6 to 7 inches, a very little thin bill, cute tiny tail, and those hairpin legs. Top all of this off with the fact that they weigh only 5 to 10 grams. If you look up cute in the dictionary, this bird's face should be there. They are the definition of cute. Ugh, gosh, I love these itty bitty birds. Another feature is a white wing bar on the greater secondary coverts with a darker band on the posterior edge. And lastly, one defining trait of this bird is the namesake crown, a dazzling scarlet color. Only the males have this though, and often is kept hidden, so don't rely on seeing this bright expressive crest. It takes for a male to be excited by a potential mate, rival, or predator in order to flash this ruby crown. When trying to identify this bird, it's best not to look for this characteristic, but instead their twitchy, wing-flicking behavior, along with their tiny size. There are other times when this flaming crest is revealed, though, such as when they scratch their head with leg over wing. For the most part, these birds are fairly quiet, so it can be easy to overlook them, but when they do sing, holy moly! Do they ever belt out a tremendous sounding song for such a tiny creature? Can you imagine that this sound comes from that minute bird? When I first began birding back in 2011, I remember hearing this song and thinking that it would be coming from a large bird. Was I ever surprised when I finally discovered one day that it was instead coming from the littlest bird I had ever seen? Their song is always noted as being amazingly loud. It only lasts for about 5 seconds and starts out with pretty low and soft high notes that open up into an excited musical twittering that abruptly changes into a loud series of 2 or 3 parted notes. Even their songs are full of excitement. The loud, complex song is used more often in spring, but they do sing it on their wintering grounds occasionally, too. As with other birds, their song is used to establish territories. And for these constantly moving small passerines, this is a more energy-efficient route to take rather than chasing rivals off and less dangerous than biting. Mm -hmm. 
One of their common calls is a harsh, fast two-parted scold, normally given when there is a potential threat. Another is a long, chattering series of short notes, also given as an alarm, but sometimes females will use it while the male is singing. There isn't much info on their nesting habits, mainly because they nest so high up, sometimes as far as 100 feet, in spruce trees close to the trunk, well out of view. What is known, though, is that incredibly, females often have a very large clutch of eggs, as many as 12. And although they don't weigh very much, as you can imagine, an entire clutch can weigh as much as the female. One thing I find amusing about these birds is that although they are monogamous, mating with just one partner in a breeding season, the pair bond only lasts for two months, from May to July when the babies fledge. I guess being so busy and all, they just don't have time for long-term relationships. One last heart-melting fact about ruby crown kinglets is that they only live a short time. The oldest known of the species was a female who was at least four years and seven months old when she was recaptured and re-released during banding operations in California in 2007. Although to us not very many years, it's hard to imagine how something so small with such high energy can live that long. What a sweet little bird. I'm so grateful to have them in my area. And I'm very happy that I've gotten better at following them as I record one with my camera, so I can share their sweetness with everyone else. Of the facts I shared, which ones did you enjoy learning about the most? And I'm curious to know what your experience has been like with these lovable birds. Comment below and let me know, and as always, I hope that you enjoyed this little video. Take care. Happy birding.